Greetings and welcome to the Pits of Insurgents, Day 7. This is Gib Slater. We had 267 zombies attack us going into Day 7. We had 324 defenses up, so once again, no deaths. We had no deaths outside of town either, so we are moving along quite well. In the big news today, we have got a uh, message from Motion Twin that the uh, soul pages of those who participated in Clash of the Titans uh, has been fixed. They say hello everyone. We finally got to the bottom of the soul page issue and the devs fixed it. Sorry for the delay. Thanks for all of your messages. Get ready for the Clash version 2.0. So that's cool. They're planning on uh, another Clash for season 5. That'll be uh, interesting to see with the new class. But yep, there we go. That is cool. Now that the soul pages are fixed, I am very happy that I can click on my soul and finally see it again. There she is. I sure miss being able to see that. Now I see that they've also uh, done some rearranging to this uh, soul page so that uh, all of the um, rare titles now appear at the top and in order from there on down highest number of achievements all the way down I think it was pretty scattershot I think it might have been like alphabetical order before now they've put them in order of uh, highest to lowest achievements and uh, someone help me out here I know this makes me sound kind of noobish I guess but I'm still trying to figure out uh, these points right here in my case uh, I have 387 points, um, and I'm pretty sure that has nothing to do with the current town I'm in and how many soul points I'm going to earn uh, once this Pits of Insurgents town comes to an end. So someone help me out. Uh, where are they getting these statistics? Where are they being ranked at? Uh, I mean, what, what's it mean? I don't exactly get it. You know, sorry. Just part of the, uh, again, the, the twinoid change and... Um, I'm just not sure what that all means. Let's get an overview of the town. We have less than an hour before the attack going into day 8. Right now we have 350 defenses, uh, which is just uh, more than enough for the high end of our attack. They're calling for no more than 343, and I think that that is the highest estimate we can get. Let's take a look best estimations that's good and with our predictor day 8 we're looking at at the moment up to 475 zombies so it's still not a huge spike but we're gonna have to uh, concentrate on uh, getting some defense building going there let's uh, talk about the ruin I need to get a dusk dawn open nope I've got one already there we go this is a fairly uh, up-to-date Dusk Dawn. I opened this up just a few minutes ago. Still focus was on our abandoned hotel ruin. Uh, we had people clear it and go in day six and then some camped and also some returned uh, for entering the ruin on day seven. I heard that we got a few more BPs out of it. Still not a lot. It hasn't produced a great amount, but kudos to everybody that risked it and went in. I know some of the names of the people that went in both day six and seven was Cavilla, and Larm, Curious Lemur, Genghis went in. Some of these people more than once over the last two days. Um, I had heard that yet uh, another poison ration was found, and uh, eventually it got put back into the hotel. We all know not to trust rations that come out of ruins they're almost always certainly poison and they can't be used for anything else we had been waiting to open up our BPs and we finally decided to do that here in day seven and we uh, really had a heyday with the uh, the BPs I'm gonna go to the construction sites and kinda scroll quickly through the list to show what was opened it was like Christmas Day for us here are the logs. Okay, so it all started with uh, Curious Lemur opening up the meat locker. 
something that I seriously doubt we're probably going to use. And then look at this, it just goes crazy. Woof and Light Wolf, Perpetual Sin starting to open up some of the BPs. We've got the Vegetable Plot. We got, nope, I'm sorry, that's the Great Boom that requires the Vegetable Pop. Uh, we got the Vaporizer. The Water Filter. Great news for our jerry cans. Community Involvement, which upgrades our personal defenses from 40% to 80%. So that's a good one right there. And we got the Animal Dump, which is kind of okay, I guess, as long as no one touches my puppy dog. We got the Slip and Slide, and the Metal Dump, and the Hen House, the Central Cafeteria, the Frat House. Let the partying begin. Uh, a lot of these are defensive. These are good. Some of these are kind of okay and not as high a priority. The Decon Shower, the Weapons Dump, Gorilla Traps, the Central Laboratory, which could be good if we really want to crank out the drugs. Another really good one, the Labyrinth. And look at this. We've got the uh, blueprint for the Wonder Wheel. So maybe if... Uh, We've got some AP, and we're okay on defenses. Who knows? Maybe we could get ourselves another nonsense built. And uh, the cinema. I was in a town that built the cinema once before, and I think it cures terror. I think. I can't exactly remember. It was neat to see. Um, the Highlanders, I do believe, uh, have the record for being the very first ones to actually create the cinema back in, I think it was season three. I had some screenshots somewhere proving it. Anyway, uh, we've got the greater, and look who's back. It's all or nothing. I'm learning to love that blueprint because it's a lot of fun. takes a lot of coordination to uh, pull off, and it just makes it for an interesting end game. We got the small cafe, which is kind of worthless. You spend some AP in a drug, and it gives you uh, uh, a single, I think, 7 AP or a couple uh, food items. And... I don't think we're really short on food. We got the blueprint for the mist spray. And look at this. We got the altar. So we can just shun everybody and bring them back. Uh, the shower. I don't think I've ever seen this one before, but in IRC they were saying that that's kind of a worthless uh, blueprint. It doesn't do anything from what they're saying. The screaming saws. And there's the butcher. So again, I really don't think we're going to have a problem with the food. The Cremato Q. Now, we don't want anybody purposefully dying, but I tell you what, if you die, we're going to cook you. That's just the way it is. That's if we actually build it, which we probably will. I don't want to take too much more time here, but I'm going to do kind of a slow scroll through the constructions, and I am going to stop right here because I saw something that I've not seen before. Uh, very interesting. Here are four um, different builds, temporary defenses, I've never seen before. They're kind of in French still. They haven't been translated, but look at these numbers. Uh, 200 defense, 300 defense, 100 defense, and 200 defense. I have looked at all of these, and each of them requires a shaman in one form or another in order to complete these. So this is interesting. Uh, the shaman, once again, may be a, an interesting class to have one or two of in a town especially for perhaps the end game because just look at that 200 and 300 defense and the items needed don't seem to be all that bad uh, some of them take some nuts and bolts in these uh, sheet metals which are very um, good to have if you have the builders merchant which we do I'm not sure if I actually uh, went over that but yeah we got the builders merchant meaning that we can go beyond houses in our personal defense and sheet metal is uh, needed for some of those uh, upgrades. But anyway, moving on, scrolling through kind of quick here. Just kind of showing this pile of stuff that we can and are building. And we're going to move right along. We did call to continue to upgrade our houses. We want to get away from tents and even past hovels. Because we have that builder's merchant, we really need people to get to at least house level in the next couple of days or so. Scrolling through here, you can see most people are at least at uh, the hovel. And we've got a couple, if not just well, one right now, that's uh, already to a shack. 
which is good. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We need to get our personal defenses uh, up. We do have a camper tonight. Asmel is down here at the Army Outpost. This one has not been camped yet. We can still get a blueprint from that. Good luck, Asmel. We'll see you in the morning. Bring that blueprint uh, back to us. And one last look here at the overview. I'm going to wrap this up for day seven. We were calling for getting the purifier and uh, filter built today, so I better take a quick little look here back into the constructions and see how we're coming along for that. We really would like to get that completed today because we've got some big builds coming up for day eight. Purifier still needs a little bit of work. So we still haven't even opened up the water filter. Doesn't look like we're going to get that finished uh, today. But yeah, there we go. So now it is time for Sin's Tip for the Day. That's right, Sin's Tip of the Day. A new segment in my daily videos where uh, one of our fearless leaders, Perpetual Sin, will give sage and wonderful advice in each of the videos to help us uh, along and today's tip of the day is don't be a noob cake <laughs> that's right today's tip is simply don't be a noob cake uh, this was kind of a little bit of a joke um, sin is going to probably provide some uh, more interesting uh, tips than that but that was the first thing he said when we were talking about it and uh, I told him I said if uh, that's what you're uh, gonna tell me that's what I'm gonna put uh, as the tip of the day don't be a noob cake but that's it for day seven in the pits of insurgents this is Gibbs Slater and my tip is don't die tonight <laughs> <laughs>